Welcome to Dialogue this week. In this corner, we invite people from around the world to talk about a wide variety of issues, ranging from culture and sports to the latest global trends. Over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, one major trend we saw was the sales of NFT artwork skyrocketing as investors around the world snapped up digital artwork that are verifiable and indestructible. It's changing the way that art is being created, consumed and collected in the digital space. But what does all of this mean for traditional works of art, like classical paintings that have been admired and appraised for their tangible value in every brushstroke and record of curation? To discover how the world of classical art can intersect with crypto tech, crypto tech like blockchain, we speak with Wolfgang Bergman, Chief Financial Officer of Belvedere, one of the world's oldest museums and a world heritage site, as a compound of Baroque 18th century palaces housing art from the Middle Ages to today. The museum launched an NFT project of its own this February, um, 10,000 digital pieces of the KISS completed by Austrian paint, painter Gustav Klimt in the early 20th century. Very warm welcome to you, Mr. Bergman. Thank you for joining us. And well, my first question to you, um, traditional art collections and blockchain, now they seem like two entirely different worlds. And it's rather incredible that you managed to translate the very expressive and opulent details of uh, Klimt's artwork as well in digital form. So first, could you fill us in on how the project is going and the technology behind it? Yes, um, hello from Vienna at first. Um, well, when, when we decided to, to, to enter the metaverse, um, we were looking for a creative and a, an, an unusual idea. And so at first we, we took the most famous uh, artwork uh, masterpiece we have on the one hand. On the other hand, um, we, we didn't only make a, a high res resolution digital copy, uh, but we divided it into 10,000 parts. And the special thing is each part results in a new, uh, unique and, and very expressive uh, uh, image. Uh, and on uh, further on, uh, a special feature is uh, that uh, you you can use this NFT as a declaration of love because you can dedicate uh, uh, this NFT. Um, and so all this together uh, makes, makes it so special. And uh, we had uh, a, a technological uh, innovation because although it's an NFT and although uh, it's running on, on the, the Ether blockchain. Uh, you do not need uh, crypto money to buy it, but you can buy it uh, with uh, a credit card on our platform. And Mr. Bergman, the KISS is one of the most famous and the most frequently reproduced works of art in the world. And it's easy to find it both online and in printed form as well. So what would make your NFT project a collectible uh, work of art in its own right, uh, particularly when there are so many one-of-a-kind NFT artworks that are just popping up everywhere? So what would you say makes the KISS NFTs very unique and worth a hundred, uh, uh, more than 1,800 euros each? Well, uh, at first, uh, the glimped the, the KISS uh, is is the most uh, famous uh, Austrian uh, uh, artwork, uh, and it's one of the most famous um, uh, uh, masterpieces in the world. So it's uh, it's so worth that nobody could could pay it. Uh, the, uh, this picture came directly from the artist uh, into the Belvedere. Uh, it has never been in a private ownership, and it will never be uh, in a private ownership. Um, and uh, we, we, we see in the, in the world of art, uh, we see the phenomenon that uh, if there are a lot of merchandising products like posters, like t-shirts, uh, even like uh, fridge magnets, uh, that doesn't uh, devalue the artwork. Um, instead, that makes it even more valuable. So, as more as coffee cups are in the world, uh, as more 
um, uh, there is the, the, the value of the, of the kiss. And the same is with, with our NFTs, because there's only one original artwork and there is only one collection of uh, uh, NFTs and each tile is a one of a kind collectible because uh, uh, we don't have 10,000 kisses, but one kiss in 10,000 tiles and that makes it uh, so worse. So you get to be part of this incredible piece of art, really. And uh, around uh, 2,400 of your Clint NFTs have been sold so far. And, well, that is less than a quarter of the total 10,000 pieces, though it has still generated an impressive $4.3 million. Well, how are you interpreting these numbers? And do you plan to mint NFTs of other artworks in the future? Uh, well, uh, to, to be honest, um, as it's a, a very new field for us um, and, and somewhat experimental, uh, we didn't know uh, what, what to expect. Uh, but we consider the result uh, as a big success. Uh, to the date, it's the most successful NFT project with an historical artwork work worldwide. And of course, uh, we, we, we learned a lot now about the scene and, and we see that the NFT scene um, uh, seems to be a, a high speed scene. Some people seem to expect that everything has to be sold out uh, in a little uh, as an hour. Uh, however, as, as a museum, we might be able to slow these things a, a little bit down uh, uh, and we can say the kiss uh, is in our house um, uh, for 114 years uh, and he will be there uh, a lot of hundreds years. And so in 100 years, nobody will ask uh, whether uh, the, 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 the NFTs were sold out in a minute, uh, in a day, in a week or in a year. Um, uh, but um, so as a museum, we are not, we are not uh, in hurry, uh, but we are sure that we will be sold out. And so as a buyer, you might be, you should be uh, in hurry. Right, so you might want to snap those um, up very quickly. Uh, but well, some see NFTs, Mr. Bergman, just like other digital tools and concepts such as the metaverses, a rather temporary height during the stretch of the pandemic. Do you think that NFT artworks simply replicate or simply enhance the experience of appreciating the original piece in its physical form, or do you think they offer something distinctly different? Uh, well, I'm sure that the metaverse is not uh, not a hype, not only a hype, it's, it's a part uh, of, of the ongoing digitalization uh, of life. Uh, and uh, metaverse uh, is becoming a part of our life. Um, but uh, it, it, it will not uh, s substitute the real life. Uh, the, the physical visitor, um, uh, the physical experience to go in a museum uh, will therefore always uh, remain uh, important. Uh, so uh, to explain it in that way, just because we can send each other kisses, kiss emojis with our um, uh, phones, uh, smartphones, uh, we will not stop uh, to have kisses in the real life. Uh, and so um, it's, it's uh, a, a part of our life uh, which is adding our life, but not substitute what, what we have so far. I see. And well, there have also been discussions on how um, NFTs and other digital trends have redefined how artwork is created. But how do they affect the curator's role? Well, we have to see that that um, NFT is to to certify um, a, a, a product, uh, but. Uh, uh, and so it, it certifies uh, for uh, art products, for example, 
uh, but uh, the NFTs haven't so far changed the, the creative processes. Uh, what has changed is that especially digital art um, uh, uh, is getting easier to, to promote it um, uh, uh, because uh, at the first time uh, you have a, a digital uh, origin uh, certificate. Uh, which we had not bef uh, before uh, for a digital file. Uh, that's uh, that's changing the, the the market for for digital art, but it it, it, it doesn't change the market for the classical art. Uh, it so the market is uh, the market is expanding, uh, and we have to consider that our project uh, is not. Um, the NFT of a new artwork, uh, uh, but uh, what we did is transforming an, an existing artwork uh, into a digital copy uh, and uh, uh, in, into this individual pieces. So it's a big uh, new um, world uh, which uh, NFTs uh, are showing and there are very different ways uh, of using it. And now the Belvedere, it, uh, as an institution, I would say it's an artwork of its own right, right? It's a World Heritage Site, a Baroque jewel, and um, the site of the Austrian State Treaty. So it's both one of the oldest museums in the world, and now it's becoming one of the most open to digitalization. So how have you been using technology to translate your heritage into the digital space? And how do you envision the future of art exhibitions? Well, uh, it's our goal to be a leading museum uh, in both worlds, uh, uh, in the classical uh, museum and uh, in the digital world. Uh, and so we, we, we started um, uh, to have uh, the possibility to see our, all our collection without uh, traveling to Vienna. Uh, but I'm convinced uh, that will only increase uh, the desire to visit Vienna um, uh, and the, the Belvedere in person. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, uh, we have digital exhibitions, we have digital conferences, uh, we have a, a big um, uh, cooperation uh, with Google Culture and Arts. Uh, with with breathtaking um, uh, um, uh, recreating from lost uh, climped pictures, um, uh, uh, so we have we have a lot uh, uh, of new uh, uh, digital uh, things, uh, but uh, it's only a second world and not uh, uh, instead of the world we had so far. And now bringing South Korea into the picture, uh, South Korea is arguably a very tech savvy nation that embraces all things digital, uh, digital innovation in its culture. And well, you've collaborated with South Korea before. Your museum showcases some of your best of my pieces on Samsung's frame TV display. Now, do you see any room for further collaborations with South Korea? Where do you see this kind of potential? Well, a, a huge potential uh, you have to see uh, uh, until the, the pandemic started, uh, there was no other country in the world uh, from which so many people visited the Belvedere as from Korea. So we had in, 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 in 2000, 2019, we had uh, 200,000 visitors uh, uh, from, from uh, South Korea. Uh, and it, it, it was uh, lead, leading the, the ranking list. Uh, and we see how uh, interested uh, uh, and enthusiastic uh, uh, the people uh, in Korea are about the work of, of Gustav Klimt. Uh, uh, and we, we, we see the, the high uh, com uh, uh, the te technology savvy uh, in your country. Uh, and so we are very interested in, 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 in corporations. Um, uh, and we are dealing with, with, with companies in, in, in South Korea. 
And now, uh, at the moment, uh, on this weekend, uh, we are presenting the KISS NFT at the Arch Busan. Uh, and we will start our international roadshow for the NFT project uh, starting in Korea. And, and, uh, and then uh, we will go to New York. Uh, so I'm very glad uh, that, uh, that I have the possibility to, to come to Korea next week myself. Uh, I'm very happy about it. Right. Well, I'm sure many of our viewers will be very excited too to, ch to check out these key events uh, happening in Busan and Seoul this month. And well, I'm afraid our time is up, so this is where we'll have to wrap up the interview. But that was Wolfgang Bergman, Chief Financial Officer of Belvedere. Thank you so much for your time today, and we hope you visit um, your visit to trip. Sorry, your trip to South Korea goes very well. See you soon in Korea. <laughs>